All right, so I'm Brittany with Tidemark Therapy, and I'm here with Cody and Valerie, and they're here to give a little bit of awareness about the LGBT community and also some really awesome things about what they've got going on with the community. So would you guys like to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Yes. Hi, my name is Valerie Hefner. I'm Cody Miller. And uh, I'm the, I am the... Uh, founder and we're she's the co-founder for Grayson County's Pride first Pride event. Awesome. And what are you, what exactly are you guys doing to help get grow the Pride community here in Grayson County? <clears throat> um well, we are hosting the event, um Grayson County's first Pride event on June 8th. That's going to be at Pecan Grove West in Sherman. Um, we intended to do this. Um, our vision and mission is just to include, respect, and celebrate um, every member of our LGBTQ plus community here in Grayson County. Um, we feel like uh, this has been a long time coming. There are still a lot of closeted individuals here in Grayson County, and we want to give them a place to be celebrated, a place to be authentic, to be themselves, to feel safe and comfortable. Um, we want to honor and celebrate um, our LGBTQ plus uh, community members who are small business owners. We want to get them out there, um, food trucks, vendors, uh, whatever they do, we want to make sure that they're being recognized. That's fantastic. And so you brought up the fact that there's still a lot of closeted folks up here, at least in our area, and I'm sure uh, nationally as well. And so I'm wondering, what are some of the things that lead folks to remain closeted? Uh, fear is a big one. Um, the fear of rejection from friends and family members or church families uh, is one of the probably the main reason why people will remain closeted. Um, another is safety, um, physical, you know, your physical safety. Uh, there's a lot of areas where it may not be safe to be out in the community and be openly uh, gay. So those, those would probably be the, the biggest two. Mm -hmm. And so um, what are some of the other struggles that specifically folks like, because I would like to spend a little bit of time talking about um, trans, the transgender population. And so I'm wondering what are some specific hurdles that folks who identify as transgender face that's different from people out there who are in uh, different communities, even lesbian or gay communities, or even in heterosexual communities? <clears throat> Well, Valerie can touch on trans youth in a moment um, because she has a trans child who struggled in school and things like that. But um, for me, my adult trans friends are uh, struggling with, um, while transitioning, staying in their current employment. So I have friends who have been let go from their jobs um, just because they work with the public and their employer maybe didn't think that it could be understood or... Um, or respected by customers who, who are seeing a person in the process of transition. Um, the suicide rate amongst uh, our trans population is astounding. Um, not only because of the difficulty with um, the transition process and just uh, trying to authenticate your identity within yourself, but also being outcasted by friends, family, churches, like I said, employers. Um, it's just, it's, it's a difficult process. So with the Pride event, we are, we're trying to bring some recognition to that as well. Right. Um, for trans, trans youth, I, I would say um, one of the fears when, with, with coming out as a transgender person who is young is again, rejection from par parents, peers, um, it's a big one, uh, and bullying within the school system. Uh, so that, that's a huge concern. Well, her daughter well. specifically was um, repeatedly uh, dead named and misgendered by a teacher. By a teacher. So mm -hmm. it, it's staff as well. It's, yeah. it's adults as well yeah. contributing to this bullying. So the bullying doesn't just come from peers, but also from the people who are supposed to protect you as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it also another interesting thing with that was I was able to see the difference in the way that her peers actually treat her 
and they do treat her different depending on whether or not the adult in the situation, the teacher in the situation, they act accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, if the teacher is accepting and, and honest and open, um, then the, peers the peers good. are that way. But mm -hmm. if the teacher is not, then the kids tend to follow suit. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> the dog thought it was a good conversation too. <laughs> okay, I've got my husband watching my dogs, otherwise I'd be doing this. Uh, and so, yeah, I can understand that that um, uh, the people, you know, look to adults to be role models, right? And if you've yeah, got right. somebody who's not being understanding or who is being closed minded or who just might be ignorant or uneducated, that you're going to run into more problems, especially with peers, you know, being younger. Um, and right. so I'm wondering too, you know, Cody, you had said something about how for the adult population, when they're transitioning, that it's harder in the work Place. And so I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you could speak a little bit more to that. Is it is it more about like the sex changes and the characteristics that make it difficult or, or what exactly is it? The process, um, I mean, if we're talking about a transition from male to female, um, if this is, this is a person's identity, this is essentially being born again and just starting your life over as who you felt like you have always been. So, um, yeah, transitioning from male to female, experimenting with um, new hairstyles, makeup, um, the female dress style and fashion, um, even transitioning from uh, female to male, um, binding your breasts, um, attempting to grow facial hair or wear a shorter haircut or dress in male fashion. I mean, these these processes you know sometimes they don't always look the way maybe an employer would want them to look from beginning to end mm -hmm. so um i mean for one friend specifically who worked in a restaurant um he was let go uh he was let go because he was told this may be confusing for customers this may not be something um our customers will understand or want to look at so he was told he could work in a different part of the restaurant away from the public and not deal directly with customers or go and he chose to go and so we're talking about a person losing their livelihood you know their 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 way of living and um, um, I had a friend and it was it's kind of the the opposite they didn't actually tell that person they had to leave the job but uh, what they did do was management um, allowed the other employees to repeatedly yes. uh, misgender this person mm -hmm. and call this person by the wrong name uh, in a very harassing, you know, in a, in a harassing form yes. and allowed it to happen without any repercussion on their, on their end yes. until that person was finally just ran off of the job. Mm -hmm. um, so the person is not being protected yeah. by their employer against discrimination, which is a natural human privilege and right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And depending on what you're doing for a living, too, I mean, if you're um, losing your job and that's your financial livelihood, I mean, that leads to homelessness, right? Absolutely. Yes. That's what the trans community, uh, adult trans people are disproportionately homeless. Um, yeah, we were talking about the suicide rate being so astounding. Yeah. The rate of homelessness is as well. Yes. In the trans community. Um, I, I have a lot of trans, trans adults that are my friends that um, have a very hard time keeping a steady roof over their head. They have to uh, band together. They have to um, sleep on whoever's couch is available um, until they're able to, and, and it happens over and over again. It's like reading the same book from the front to the end over and over again. They'll start at another job. They'll get in somewhere, you know, by the skin of their teeth and, you know, either one of two things will happen. The employer will decide they don't feel like dealing with the transition and they end up back at square one. Uh, right. Yeah. And, uh, force them out or, or this, you know, the other p employees force them out mm -hmm. and they end up at square one all over again. And it, it's, it's a never ending cycle. Yeah. In yeah. Cases. 
Yeah, and I know that it makes it, at least for some of my clients that I've had too, regardless of whether they've been in like the service industry or whether it's been in a professional capacity, when you lose those jobs, you're also not just losing your livelihood, you're losing a sense of identity of who you are too because your job really affects who you are as a person. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and people should not have to compromise their authenticity or identity um, who they are at the core of their being for just to have a job. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right. And just to have a place to live or be able to go to school, you know. It's about dignity and it's about respect. And, you know, if we want the same things for ourselves, and like this is what I tell people so much when I'm trying to educate folks, is that if you're wanting, you know, basic food, clothing, shelter, friendships, relationships, everybody wants that same thing Absolutely. regardless of whatever background in life that they're walking. And I think right. they tend to forget that when, you know, there's a lot of hatred towards the LGBT community, we tend to dehumanize folks. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we switch a little bit to the education aspect, what is it that like people who are wanting to be supportive of folks that are in the LGBTQ plus community, how do you be supportive? Um, I think that the, what I did when um, my son first came out um, to me is I, I did the research and on online and not only did I do the research online, but I put myself in situations um, where I was going to be around people who were also gay um, and, and just kind of, for lack of a better word, learn the culture. Uh, <laughs> because when you immerse yourself in something, th then you can begin to understand. Um, when you get comfortable with people, you are get to a place where you're able to ask some tough questions that you may not have been able to have the answer to before. Um, so the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to get out there and do the research online. Educate yourself. Put yourself we live in, in an era yeah. in which you can pick up your phone and learn anything you need to know about anyone within the, the LGBTQ plus spectrum. Yeah. And, and put yourself in situations where you're going to, you know, be around these people, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, you attend a church that you know is, you know, affirming mm -hmm. and inclusive, and, inclusive yeah. and you're going to be around them there, or if you go to mm -hmm. a bar or, or, or whatever, but put yourself in situations where you're around people and, uh, you know, can learn that way. And, and something else uh, that, that is probably quite surprising for people who, who aren't as educated. Um, so the media loves to spin LGBTQ plus people, especially trans people, as um, irrational and just looking for an opportunity to flip out on a public service uh, servant, you know, a, um, a cashier or someone in a restaurant who misgenders them, when really they're all just looking for an opportunity to educate you. And people are inherently kind and they are good and they, they want an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? You misgendered me. These are actually my preferred pronouns. Let's work on that. If that happens again, just apologize. We'll work on it again and we'll move on. Um, these processes are not difficult if you just educate yourself and ask questions. It's okay to ask. Yeah. Right. And so when we're talking about asking questions, what is an appropriate question versus what is an inappropriate question to ask somebody who might identify as like specifically transgender? I I would say an appropriate question would be to ask, uh, well, when, you know, when did you know? Because that's one that I, a lot of people I think are curious about. Um, one that would be inappropriate would be to ask a person who is transgender whether or not they are pre, you know, pre-op or post-op or what they have between their, mm -hmm. their, their legs. Um, that's never appropriate. If it, no, if, we don't concern ourselves with other people's you, genitals. No, never appropriate. <laughs> but the easiest way to, 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 to really say, it, if it's not a question that you would ask anyone else, it doesn't make it okay to ask a trans person. Correct. So mm -hmm. that would probably be, uh, you know, what I would say, you know, with more people within, um, same, same sex relationships. It's not okay to ask, um, who's the boy or the girl? And the who's the top or the right. bottom? Uh, yeah, absolutely, Correct. absolutely. Or uh, to tell somebody they don't seem gay, you yeah. know, or, or or you don't 
there's just certain things that you do, you don't say. What <laughs> thing that that has to do with a person's sexuality is just inappropriate to to ask about to inquire about. Um, but as far as is like I said with uh, you know a line of appropriate questioning um, to simply educate yourself if you are just looking to further your understanding. Um, most people are looking for an opportunity to educate you and enlighten you. Yeah. All right. And so how do you go about what would be a good way to phrase the question of how to ask people which pronouns they prefer? Just like that. Yeah. I think that a lot of people are, um, fear that if a, they see someone who is, you know, can't quite tell their, their gender is a little bit ambiguous, um, that they're going to offend them by asking them which pronoun is is proper and i'm here to tell you that i know enough people that have told me i would rather someone ask me yes. what my pronoun is than misgender me than misgender me yep. um because when you ask a person their pronoun um you know that person knows if th that somebody might need a little help to to recognize you know but you're showing respect right away in that you know you're going to respect whatever this person's answer is is who that person will now be called you know you'll now be calling that person by that pronoun so it's in my opinion it kind of seems like uh, it's a, more of an act of respect than to yeah, just we are, assume. we are both very involved in advocacy and still to this day meet people every day that as an act of respect we will ask what pronouns do you prefer right mm -hmm. it's just part of it and i think that people have to get to where they're not so afraid to ask that yeah um because it's it is it is it's part of it and we're seeing more and more of it and we have uh more and more of our youth are finally being um brave enough to come out and, and tell younger and, and younger and they're not doing that because th this this is a new concept or, or right. this is a new thing for for humanity they're doing that they've been around since the beginning of time they're doing this because of educational opportunities like these Absolutely. they're doing this because we are encouraging people to ask and we're having what are your preferred pronouns so that you do not die having been misgendered your entire life right you know yes yeah, so and that's a that's a very important part that you bring up because one of the the feedback that i've heard from the community when they're specifically asking me questions about um specifically transgender folks is oh well they're just coming out especially like youth because it's just a fad or because their friends are doing it and mm -hmm. i tell them no that's really not the case that it's really just because there's more awareness that's being talked about Absolutely. and people are uh, discussing it and so that it feels like it's a safer environment Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. I have um, a lot of friends that are just now coming out in life that are in their 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they just now became transgender. It's because they're now finally starting to feel that they have a little bit of support. Uh, what little support that it is, people are starting to advocate for trans people people are starting to come out of the wood, woodwork celebrities it they, is becoming, yeah they have celebrity role models yes now. you know so it's it's not such a foreign concept and so now we have these you know people that are in their 30s and 40s and 50s that are transitioning and i don't think that there's any difference in the amount of people that were trans before it's just yeah. you're right the, it, the platform has opened up now mm -hmm. and the, the, now i you know i've read a book and, and that's the thing is a lot of people that are trans, I mean, they know something is off, but they didn't have the words for it, or they didn't have even, they'd never even heard of the yes, concept. We are helping them. Of a trans person. Define this. And uh, it took longer for them to even understand themselves. What, what was it happening was, with That them. was happening. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that one good thing is that our, uh, our youth, they won't have to go through that stage. I mean, if we can save any kind of suffering, no matter where it's at, you know, or that's a good thing. Happens. That's yeah. a good thing. Um, one of the other big questions that I get a lot is, well, how are sexuality and gender different? So could you explain a little bit about that? Yes. Go ahead. So the way that, an easy way to look at that or to th remember that is your sexuality is who you go, go to, to bed, bed with. with your gender is who, who you, you go, go to, to bed, bed as so mm -hmm. it's two completely different concepts and a lot of times people want 
lump that all into one thing and it's not one thing and it becomes confusing if you lump it all into one thing because it doesn't make sense yeah a, a transgender person can fall anywhere on the spectrum of sexuality Absolutely. Um, a transgender person can be straight a transgender person can be gay or bi or pansexual or whatever right um, your sexuality is who you partner with um, in attraction to who to pursue relationships with and your gender is who you identify as yes two different things that have to be and it's important that those two distinctions are made it is especially with trans youth with children um we don't identify uh trans children we don't say this is their sexuality no. um children do not possess sexuality so just... this is their gender yeah. instead that's that's a fantastic point and so i think um i've asked you every single question that i can think of that i most get commonly asked but is there anything else that you guys would like to add that you can think of off the top of your head um we had talked earlier we do want to touch on dead naming um just with uh trans people so um you know i was telling her earlier just imagine um having finally living your authentic life and someone constantly reminds you of a life that you don't want to remember a life that was painful uncomfortable um and a life in which you did not feel like you were yourself so when we say dead we mean that that old life old name and old identity that you were given by your family or society or whatever is essentially dead um so continuing to uh name someone or address them by the life they left behind is very painful and very traumatic and very offensive yeah so i do have a question surrounding that specifically i've had clients who have transitioned as adults and let's say they've married and they have a supportive partner right and so like let's say they've got like wedding photos for example of when they were a previous you know um gender and how do you navigate between wanting to hold on to those memories but also wanting to you know have that past dead like how do you um just navigate it that's a that's an i think a very individual journey um personal some, and specific yeah very yeah. very personal very individual i know some people who um the old pictures don't bother them so bad it is just part of their journey and then i know some that it's very devastating to see the those old memories so that's that's a very very personal thing for a person um one of the things that i think it's important that we touch on before we're finished is, is that suicide rate for the trans uh trans youth. uh that number is actually 44 percent of trans youth will try to commit suicide um if not successful um i've seen kids in support groups on facebook one minute they're there the next minute they're gone and yep. that's that's no lie that happens at least no, we we receive twice text and, messages every day. We lost another one. We lost another one. We lost another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's very important. I think um, is is that we need to to realize that transgender people have been around since the beginning of time. They've been here as long as people have been here. Um, we have tried uh, through through you know several different processes to to make the brain match the body and we see what that gets us what that gets us is a 44 percent suicide rate between trans youth yep. uh what we're seeing when we affirm someone's gender is that that 44 actually goes down to four goes down four percent um so it, with just those numbers alone and, and the research is still early of trying to match the body to the brain but what i can from what i can see is if the suicide rate goes from 44 to 44 percent that we're moving in the right direction mm -hmm. um so and, and that is a lot of the reason that that we're doing this mm -hmm. um that we're even forming this foundation and and trying to bring um a, a celebratory event like pride to grayson county um we need they need acceptance um 44 percent of these kids feel so alone that they would rather be dead than alive you know um 
we need to make sure that that they meet other kids that they can network with other people um even our our trans adults uh like she said you, you know people in their 40s and 50s yeah. and 60s who didn't feel validated or comfortable until now until today um didn't feel accepted so they need to meet other people who are like them who have been on this journey or are still going through this journey yeah. um and we need to give them a place to feel safe and feel accepted and so what I tell what I tend to tell folks a lot is loneliness and isolation is a death sentence so you're absolutely yes. right that those suicide statistics are you know disheartening and that is why they're so large is literally because they feel like they didn't they do not have anybody that they can turn to right yes and if you are a parent or a grandparent or a peer or a sibling of someone who is coming out um, there are a lot lot of resources available for you. Um, there are a ton of support groups online. There are people in this very county, there are people in this area who will meet with you and they will provide you with the education and support you need to get everybody through this process and on the other side so everybody can be happy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, one of the other things that I tell people is part of our job is, you know, being in this generation and in the older generations is we are supposed to teach our youth and the people that come after us how to lead good lives within their communities and how to like essentially treat the planet well too. But that's a whole entire different discussion. And so if we're <laughs> If we're treating people bad now, what is that going to mean for the future of all of our societies? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. We were talking Absolutely. about this earlier, that people should have the constant desire to progress and evolve and be better and better. And that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, is there anything else that you guys would like to touch on that's important to y'all? Um, I think that I, I've hit all the points that I would like, you know, that I would like to talk about. Um, you know, uh, I would like, no, you know, we need to let the trans youth know that it gets better. We do need to let them know that because I know that there's a lot of people that are young that aren't quite sure, you know, they're not in a safe place where they can transition or tell anybody and that might make them feel like they we don't want to be kids. here. Stay alive. Stay alive. Because one more day and one day at a time. If you can wake up the next day, it gets better. We just want you to keep waking up the next day because it does get better. It, it really better. does. Yes, because if you don't have people that can be supportive of you now, you can find that tribe for yourself as you get older, whether it means you have to move or whether it means that you associate with different folks. Absolutely. Absolutely, you're not alone, even though it might feel like it at the moment, it, it's, that's something that will pass. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, we have a couple of fundraisers coming up uh, prior to the actual Pride event, which I said will be June 8th at Pecan Grove West in Sherman. Um, on the day of the event, we are going to have vendors, food trucks, um, we are gonna have a children's area, um, bounce house, story time. We're going to have several bands playing. We're going to have a junior drag show, an adult drag show. Um, but coming up prior to that, we are going to have a couple of fundraisers. One is April 20th. It's going to be at Greater Texoma Health Clinic um, in Denison, and it's a huge rummage sale. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a lot of stuff for sale. Um, of course, all proceeds benefiting Pride. Um, May 4th, at Hilton Garden Inn, Sherman Denison, we are going to have a Pride Prom. This is for uh, youth and adults, um, grades kindergarten all the way through adult ages. Um, we're going to have four separate events that day, a uh, Pride Social for um, grades K through eight, and then a Pride Prom for grades nine through 12, and then a Pride Mixer for ages 18 to 20, and then um, Pride After Dark for ages 21 and up. 
um, DJ dancing. It's in the ballroom out there. That's going to be a lot of fun. Be great. Um, and then May 18th at Tupelo Honey Bar and Grill in Denison, we are going to have a um, drag show benefiting Grace and Pride. Awesome. So those are, those are the big fundraisers we have coming up. That's fantastic. And so if, um, if people want to see where all of this information is located, is it on a website at all? It is on our website as well as on uh, social media under Grayson County's First Pride event. Um, and then uh, the website is graysoncountypride.com. Fantastic. And so if you guys want to help support this event, then please show up to everything that she just listed. Um, bring your checkbooks with you, bring your cash with you, and, and bring your just general like fun attitude with you. Too. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything yes. else you guys want to discuss or touch on? I think that's it. Okay. Good deal.